hey everyone welcome back to my channel if you are new here thank you thank you thank you for stopping by if you are returning i appreciate you so much make sure that you subscribe to my channel and stay tuned i just wanted to get on here and pretty much talk to you guys about what i do for a living so i am new to this platform so a lot of people don't know i am enlisted in the united states air force i've been in the military it'll be six years this upcoming april when i came in there wasn't really a lot of information on my career field what i do specifically so i just wanted to come on here and kind of clarify what i do if you are looking for maybe a profession in the military so stay tuned as you can see by the title i'm going to be letting you guys know what i do in the military and when i first came in there really wasn't a lot of information about the job that i do online I used YouTube, I looked it up, and there really wasn't anything that I could find that gave me an in-depth answer of what I was going to be doing. And I know that when I did sign up and I came in and I went through my technical training and I got to my first duty station, it was kind of a shell shock because I had no idea that my career field really consisted of all these different things. I just want to add a disclaimer, this is not like a military sponsored video. This is not me trying to be a recruiter and tell everyone to come on in and join the military. Whoop de whoop de woo. This is just me letting you in on what I do. Alrighty, so to just clarify, I am in the United States Air Force. I'm an enlisted member. I'm a staff sergeant to be exact. I've been in for almost six years now and that's so crazy because when I came in, I signed up for a six year enlistment and I'm almost finished with my first enlistment the time seriously flew so that's the branch that i went into so this job is specifically for my branch it's not in any other branch i'm speaking specifically for what i do in the air force so my job title or what you know our afsc is what we call it um what i go by it's just your duty title and what the code is for the job that you do within the air force technically it is a 4h 0x1 and that is listed as a cardiopulmonary laboratory technician and I know you're probably thinking like what in the world is that I am a healthcare professional so I do work in the hospital and my job we staff a outpatient clinic and we also staff the inpatient clinic which serves the ICU MSU and the ER on the other side of the hospital as well so there is a bunch of us and we split off and we go staff both of those sections so when I first came into the military I remember just taking my ass bath that was pretty much that I did go to college before enlisting in the military I did like a year and a half at the University of Toledo in Ohio and then I left school and I wanted to continue my education I just wanted to go about it a different route so I went ahead and enlisted into the Air Force and when I came in the only thing I needed to do was take my ASVAB which if you are interested in joining the military you will have to take that and that is a test that they make you take to just kind of gauge your general knowledge on a bunch of different subjects it's like a placement test and based on what you get on that test your score you will be given a list of job options so technically um, just to be blunt you want to do as well as you can on that test you'll have a lot more options I don't remember my exact score that I received when I came in but I want to say it was like 63 64 somewhere in that range is what I can remember at the time for my career field you didn't have to have any college experience that was just kind of like a plus to help you put on rank a little bit faster once you graduated from basic training and got into your tech school which you'll learn more about that later this is not like a military specialty video pretty much you didn't have to have any college whereas now the requirements have changed for my job and you do need to have an associate's degree to apply so little update there so what is a cardiopulmonary laboratory technician pretty much our job is broken up into three portions so there is the cardiology portion there is the pulmonary portion and then there's also the respiratory portion like I said we staff both the outpatient and the inpatient clinics in our hospital so the cardiology and the pulmonary portions are a part of our outpatient section so you work in a clinic if you're in the cardiology section you will be doing EKGs 
halter monitors, stress tests, echocardiograms, all of those things and you'll be assisting the physician, you'll be prepping the patient, you'll be running the tests, all of that good stuff. So that's what you'll do over there. So if you're familiar with any of that, anything that has to do with the heart function, that is the cardiology section and that's what we work under. When you work in the pulmonary section, it's pretty much the same thing. You'll be assisting the physicians and you'll be performing all the tests that we do, which is anything to do with the lungs. When I'm speaking on the pulmonary, section that's what I mean I'm referring to the lungs um, I know a lot of people aren't you know familiar with medical terminology and they're probably like cardiology pulmonary what are, what are you talking about so cardiology is specifically anything referring to the heart like I stated earlier pulmonary is referring to your lung functions and those are the tests that you do in that section you'll be looking at you know trying to rule out obstructive and restrictive lung diseases so that's what we specialize in and you are the technician so you do a great deal of the actual work you're not diagnosing the patient I'm not a physician but we do the testing for our physicians so we set up everything for our bronchoscopies our thoracentesis um, our PFT which is a pulmonary function test it's a baseline test to rule out restrictive and obstructive lung disease, your CPXs, your EIAs, which is an exercise induced asthma study. All of that we set up for and we do and we really like man those functions. The thing that I wanna stress um, about my job is that we are given a lot of control. People think that like, oh, you're just a technician. We do a lot of the work and it is really hands-on and I really, really like that about our job because you are in there you're one-on-one -on -one with your doctor you're one-on-one -on -one with your patient so you know the ins and outs of the tests that you're performing you are working hand in hand with that doctor to help that patient so i do really really like that about our job the third section is the respiratory portion which like i said that is over in the inpatient side of the hospital because you work with patients that are admitted so anybody that comes into the ER, um, anybody that is admitted into the ICU or the MSU for a period of time, a few days, maybe a couple weeks, um, anything over that, they're probably going to get transported out to another facility. We don't really keep people for that long, but um, you are helping with that patient and you are doing respiratory. It's pretty much dealing with the lungs and as well as kind of like hand in hand with pulmonary. Um, you're dealing with the lung functions and you're making sure that your patient is breathing. So any type of breathing disorder, that's what we're called for. We do um, ventilator management, any type of chest percussion, um, acapellas. We set up nightly CPAPs for patients that have obstructive sleep apnea. We also run any venous blood gases, cord gases for neonates. ABGs, we actually draw the ABG, which is one from the wrist because it comes from the artery and we're the only ones in the hospital who typically do those. We're called to get those. Um, so yeah, that's what you do over there and you get to you know wear scrubs and all that good stuff. You would think that you would wear scrubs 24 seven, we don't. We actually wear our uniform on the outpatient side of the hospital. So um, yeah, you actually get to wear scrubs. And the shift over on the inpatient hospital is different. So we work Panama schedule and there are people that work the day shift and there's people that work the night shift. Currently I am over there in the respiratory clinic and I work, well in the respiratory, it's not a clinic, in the respiratory section and I'm working night shift, which is why I always say I work nights. And we do 12 hour shifts and it's Panama. So two on, two off, three on, two off, and so forth. Now that I've kind of given you just like a brief overview, like I said, I just want to recap. I am a cardiopulmonary lab technician, a 4-H by trade. That's what we are known by. We staff the cardiology, pulmonary, and respiratory departments of our hospital. When I came in, and that's the main point of this whole entire video, I don't want this to be super, super long, but if you do have questions, feel free to ask them down below in the comments and I will explain everything to you a little bit more. But I remember coming in, my recruiter kind of pushed me towards this job. It ended up coming open before any of the other jobs I selected on my dream sheet. And he's like, hey, this is a really good one. You know, it's healthcare, which is a really good, it's really good if you guys are considering. Healthcare is, you know, kind of, the way to go just letting you know he pushed me to go into it and he's like yo like come in here it's 
sign these papers. This is really good. Like, look it up online. We have a description for it on the Air Force website, you know, where they tell you what the jobs are and you can go look on there and then if you want it, come in and sign for it. I looked on there and me, being me, I hate blood. I hate anything to do with drawn blood. I am squeamish, it is horrible. And I was like, oh, this doesn't have anything to do with that, does it? And he was like, no, 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 I shouldn't. Just, just read the description. And when I went to read the description, um, it said that I was gonna be running blood. Like you run and you just assist the physician and that's that. And I was like, oh, okay, well the doctor will be drawing blood and cool, cool, that's fine. You know, I could do that. I could put the, just push the blood through the machine. That's nothing. And then when I actually <laughs> signed for my job, went through basic, got to my first tech school, which was in Texas. And that was a three month training program just to learn all the book work and go through everything like this is this hey teaching you how to read ekgs teaching you just anatomy and physiology which before i came in the military i was a business major in school i still go to school part-time and i still am a business major and like <laughs> i didn't know anything about anything so basically they taught you all of that stuff and you're like okay okay wow and then you get to your phase two, which we do have a very, very long training school compared to a lot of the other healthcare jobs in the military. We're actually probably like one of the longest, if not the longest, I think the only other job that's as long as us is the x-ray technicians. So they have a long training school as well. Ours is a year. So we do three months of our phase one, nine months of phase two, and then you go to your permanent duty station and you do one year of on the job training, which is really just you performing the tasks that you learned over the last year. So when I got to phase two, that was the more kind of, oh, we actually get to touch stuff. We get to put our hands on things. We're actually handling patients. And like I said, it was a shell shock because I didn't think I was gonna be the person actually drawing the blood I thought the doctor was gonna do that. And <laughs> I was gonna be able to just sit, you know, and just, oh, okay, thanks, I'll take that. And put it in a machine and go on about my business. And it's like, no, you are responsible for drawing this. So you are essentially, you know, doing a lot more work than what I thought I was gonna be doing coming in. But honestly, it was one of the best decisions I've made. I think I picked the best job I could have picked for because my job also set me up for success not only in the military but in the outside as well so if I wanted to return to the civilian sector I do have a trade so a lot of times and I'm not saying this for everybody I'm just saying this is common a lot of times people will come into the military and will sign up for a job that does not really correlate or doesn't transfer as easily to the civilian sector so when they get out of the military it is kind of hard to find your footing and go into whatever your next step of life will be for me it's a little bit easier just because the program that i'm in was also accredited with the military so we were able to test for our state boards we we're allowed to sit so after you have completed all of your requirements and you get your associates through the community college of the air force you are then eligible to test for your board. So I'm a certified respiratory therapist. So I can go work at a hospital on the outside doing respiratory therapy. And if you know anything about the medical field, that is a very lucrative position. Um, it's good to be able to go and transfer into a medical field. As you know, that's always in high demand. Everyone's always sick. Someone's always sick somewhere. So you'll always need someone. It shouldn't be you know, a difficult process to actually transfer my skills out i'm about to test for my registry so that's good and that's not the only thing that um the military has provided as far as like testing for our certifications and things of that sort there are a bunch and i will kind of like list them maybe on the side of the screen or down below somewhere but there are so many certifications that you can apply for within my job and i just think that that is so great because It'll set you up for success, okay? You should not have a problem going out into the civilian sector and getting a job after you leave from, you know, being in the Air Force, especially being in my career field specifically. So sometimes there are people who, you know, stay and they do 
20 years in the military and they retire and maybe they'll look for a GS position or come back to base where they can work. There are other people like me who plan on just doing their enlistment and then transitioning back into the civilian sector. And either which way, you know, you have something that you can utilize to support yourself. I hope that this video was informative. I hope that it was at least a little bit helpful if you were interested in going into a career in the healthcare industry as far as the military is concerned. And then also if you are interested in my job specifically, maybe you're in the process of joining now and you can't really find a lot of information in regards to what a 4-H is. Hopefully I was able to shed a little bit of light. So just as a recap, pretty much you need to have your ASVAB score, you need to take that and do decent on that. And then you also need to have at least an associate's degree if you want to apply for my job. Like I said, it's broken down into the three sections. You're a cardiopulmonary technician, but you are staffing the cardiology clinic, the pulmonary clinic, and the respiratory suite over on the inpatient side. And then you are eligible after receiving your associates through the military or just having one from when you come in and then completing your training through our accredited program, you are eligible to sit and take your boards and tests to become a certified respiratory therapist in whatever state you're located in or if you want to save that and just apply for a license, maybe back in your home state. If you don't plan on staying in the military, you're eligible to do that as well. You can test for a boatload of other certifications to go behind your name, which I think is really, really awesome because it sets you up for success. Make sure that you do apply and you go ahead and you get as many certifications as you can. Being enlisted and being in our career field, you don't have to just stay a technician. You can go off and join a nursing program. You can apply for a PA program. You can go into another school and try to become a doctor. You know, there's a lot of things that this is kind of just like a gateway to. So you don't have to stay in this career field. There are a lot of other pathways you can choose if you would like to further your education as far as, you know, your career and stuff like that in the healthcare industry. There's a bunch of stuff that you can do included. Be sure to check those out as well. But, you know, having those certifications and learning as much as you can will really just help develop you. All right, guys, so I hope that this video was really, really helpful. I hope that I shed a little bit of light. Like I said, there wasn't really anything on YouTube. I know there are people that I work with that are making videos as well, so I'll go ahead and I'll link them down below um, if you want to go watch their videos where they talk about what we do and maybe if I wasn't very clear, they'll be able to help you out a little bit. When I first came in, like I said, there wasn't anything online that talked about my job or talked about what we did, and I personally, I know this is biased, I'm biased. Think that I have the best job in the enlisted Air Force, especially as far as like healthcare goes. This is the bee's knees. So uh, if you guys are interested and you're, like I said, you are looking for a career in healthcare and you're about to join the Air Force, you should definitely try to apply for this job if you have the requirements that are needed. And just if not, if you're just interested and you're just like, oh, let me see what she's talking about or, you know, blah 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 hopefully this is helpful so if you have any questions feel free to leave them down below in my comments i would love to help you out and just clarify anything i spoke on today and i hope that you come back and i hope that you want to stay and you want to see more videos from me and you hit that subscribe button that notification bell and you join my family so i'll see you later